Prince Albert piercings versus friend and piercings. Coming up next on Pros and Cons by Piercer, episode number 75. So stick around. For those who are new to the channel, my name is Dave O. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. I own and operate the Axiom Body Piercing Studio located here in Des Moines, Iowa, inside Skin Kitchen Tattoo. So when I talk to you about these things, I'm talking to you with a level of expertise as someone who's been in the industry for well over 26 years and has done a lot of these piercings. Before we get too far into this, I do need to make a little bit of a disclaimer. If you are easily offended, if you do not want to learn about male genitalia or male genitalia piercings, this isn't the video for you. If you are not of an appropriate age to uh, uh, watch this, this is not the video for you. If you're looking for some type of weird sexual gratification, this is not the video for you. What this video is, is an educational video that's going, that's targeted towards those that are considering these two piercings and trying to decide between the two of them. If you're not one of those people, there's plenty of videos on here that I'm sure that you will find edifying and age appropriate and fun. With that out of the way, let's talk about what we're going to talk about today. Uh, we're talking about two male genital piercings. The Prince Albert, which is uh, generally right below the glands, goes out through or into the urethra and out the front. Fretted piercings, which are pretty much done with a barbell in position anywhere along the shaft, um, except a se couple separate different placements that are possible depending on your anatomy. So that's the basics. We're going to cover six topics. Yes, I added one for those that are fans of the series. We're going to talk about anatomy. We're going to talk about placement. We're going to talk about the piercing experience. That's a new one. We're going to talk about um, healing, jewelry choices, and living with the piercing. So let's start out with anatomy. With Prince Albert, uh, basically it's placed, and I'll get a little bit more in depth than that in a second, in that triangle. The top of the triangle is produced by the, the, the gland and the bottom being kind of where that nick of the penis is or where uh, what foreskin tissue is left. Usually done dead center, out and through. Um, there needs to be enough tissue there to support the jewelry. Um, it can't be too far to the entrance of the urethra. We wanted enough far enough back that it's not going to easily cause issues with rejection. Um, also, there needs to not be a lot of uh, veins that are visibly um, large and easy to see. And you want to avoid any tendons that might be in the area. And we'll get into that later too. With the frenum, the frenum can be done pretty much anywhere on the shaft of the penis, horizontal. I don't suggest doing them vertically in alignment, mainly because it'll put too much agitation on it. As far as having anatomy, the tissue needs to be loose enough that it, be, it can be clamped comfortably. We do not want to go into that sponge tissue that's underneath or the barrier that protects it. Um, we are not going into the actual shaft of the penis. All we're doing is that superficial skin or that outer layer. And it can be placed uh, depending on your anatomy in various different places and positions and groupings. That brings us to placement. With the Prince Albert, like I mentioned earlier, there's kind of that triangle. The top of the triangle is the glands. The bottom of the triangle is the neck or what's left of the foreskin. Um, one thing I forgot to cover in the anatomy part of it on Prince Albert's, those that are uncut, uncircumcised, and still have their foreskin attached, in some cases they can be done if that foreskin is loose enough to allow enough room for the jewelry. It is really something you need to see a piercer. You need to go through, through a consultation to find out if that's going to work for you. Now, uh, as far as the location, it needs to be in that kind of triangle area. There needs to be enough room that the jewelry is going to be supported without it migrating or rejecting. Um, the area should be also free of large visible veins. Uh, with some people, when they're cut, that frenium tendon will kind of sit underneath the uh, underneath the tissue. 
uh, that should be avoided. And generally, if we're going to pierce off to the side one way or another, we generally do it to the side that the person dresses. Uh, that's an old uh, Taylor term. Dressing means the side that your penis normally hangs to. Because most of us, it hangs a little bit one way or a little bit the other way. With random piercings, there's kind of uh, two main pro uh, traditional placements and etc. Um, the traditional placement is someone who is uncut or uncircumcised. It's basically done behind that uh, tendon and is underneath uh, the uh, foreskin. Most people, if they're cut, it's usually the first one is usually through that nick of the penis, as we call it, where uh, the, that very sensitive tissue where uh, the uh, what's left over of your foreskin, basically. Um, it can be done, however, anywhere along the shaft, as long as it's horizontally. It can be done on the top, it can be on the side, it can be done um, on the bottom, which the bottom is probably the most popular. That moves us on to piercing experience. With the Prince Albert, uh, the piercing experience can be a little bit uncomfortable. The main reason being is that we have to use a needle receiving tube to ensure that we can do the piercing safely. For those that are unfamiliar with what a needle receiving tube is, it is a tube about the same width as I would say an ink pen. Um, it's hollow, uh, it's gonna be, uh, has kind of a raised edge on one side. Um, basically, what we do is we lubricate that, insert that into the urethra, and then line it up with the piercing marker markings, and then pierce through it into the tube. So that way, we don't have to worry about hitting anything we shouldn't. Um, they can be uncomfortable. It can be uncomfortable to have anybody put anything in urethra. Uh, I've had mixed results with this over the years, but I have to say that 99% of the people that I polled on this particular subject found the needle receiving tube to be the most uncomfortable part of it. The piercing itself is very split second. Um, it tends to be kind of a little intense initially, but the pain fades very, very rapidly. With renums, uh, it really depends on how loose the tissue is and how pliable it is. Of course, we can only do this piercing when you're flaccid. Um, if that tissue is super tight, Using the forceps to clamp the tissue, we usually use Pennington forceps or triangular shaped forceps, it can be a little bit uncomfortable. The piercing itself is split second, just like a Prince Albert. Uh, you're gonna feel kind of an intense pain and then it will fade very rapidly. It's not uncommon with genital piercings for people to go, oh my God, and then like, I can't even feel it. That moves us on to healing. Let's start with the PA or the Prince Albert. Very easy heal in most cases, usually very quick, anywhere from 8 to 12 weeks is your average healing time. However, during that period of time, you may have uh, some issues. The first one being is uh, it will bleed slightly, off and on, sometimes for three to five days. With some people, they will notice discomfort on the inside of the urethra, um, and they might have a burning sensation when they urinate. Uh, this can usually be resolved by submerging or by a big gulp cup, filling it halfway full of water, inserting the tip in and peeing into it, opposed to using the normal bathroom ma measures. It kind of reduces the pressure and makes it hurt less and eliminates that bleeding. Also, the first couple times you urinate, there might be some blood clots that come out, which is kind of nasty. But because of the bleeding, I do suggest wearing a pad or sanitary napkin for that first roughly three to five days up to a week. It's the same thing with the frenum. So this is something that I'm going to repeat somewhat here in a second. Other than that, it's a very quick heal. Sex whenever you're comfortable because that's probably the most common question people ask is, when can I have sex? When it feels okay. Gentle at first. If it hurts to do something, rest or try doing something else. Um, latex barrier, I suggest for a minimum of six months, regardless if you've been with a partner for 40 years, we're more concerned about possibly uh, getting slight tears of that fragile piercing and then having to the exchange of bacteria. And then you have an infection and a piercing that is on its way to healing or already healed. After it's healed on both of these piercings, I do not suggest, uh, Having unprotected sex with any new partners, you are more acceptable to STDs even after the piercing is well healed. It is always best to practice safe sex one way or another when you're switching partners. 
That moves us on to healing the frenum. Uh, frenum's not usually as complicated. You don't have the burning or burning sensation in the urethra. You don't have as many issues with that. They do bleed usually, spot bleed anywhere from three to five days. Most people not noticeably as much as say the PA. Um, quick heal, roughly about eight to 12 weeks. Of course, the things with safe sex and sex apply to it too. That moves us on to jewelry choices with the PA. I generally suggest piercing initially with a circular piece of jewelry, whether it be a ring or a circular barbell. The reason for that being is that they are lighter. They cause less stress on the piercing. Also, they give you kind of a little bit of a buffer room when you become erect that it doesn't extend beyond the length of that jewelry. After it heals, it isn't a problem to switch out to a curved barbell. You just want to make sure that it's fitted in size when you're erect and you have a little bit of uh, looseness there. Uh, if it's too tight, it can cause a lot of pressure on that urethra entrance and can actually slowly begin to tear it. With frenum piercings, it really depends on which type you have. If you have the type that's underneath the, the traditional one that's underneath the, uh, underneath the foreskin, usually a ring, circular barbell, or a curved barbell is usually your best option initially to pierce with. However, every other one of them, um, your best bet is a standard straight barbell, uh, especially during the healing process. After it heals, you can experiment with rings. I, I don't really suggest them. Um, I have had clients that have used rings that wrap all the way around the shaft. Uh, I don't know how comfortable that would be in the long run. And every time you put something larger in a piece of jewelry, you're increasing, or in a piercing, not in a jewelry. Uh, you're increasing the amount of contact it gets, the amount of abuse it gets, etc. So take that into account whenever picking out jewelry. During the healing process, the piercing jewelry will be a bit on the long side. So especially when you're flaccid, it can get caught and snagged on clothing. So wearing something that's a little bit more restrictive, like briefs or box of briefs, may be a better option instead of that thing catching all the time. Now that moves us on to living with the piercing. Prince Alberts. Um, first off, let's talk about the good stuff. Uh, most men find that stimulation of the jewelry moving through the urethra very stimulating. Um, it can be pleasurable. Uh, women can also find the movement of the jewelry pleasurable during uh, intercourse. Um, that varies from person to person. Some people like it. Some people don't like it. It's one of those things you don't really know until you try it. With... Um, the bad stuff. This piercing, because it is in your urethra and out the front, will affect how you can urinate. Um, everybody thinks that it's mainly the hole, but that's really not, the piercing hole is really not the source of issues. Well, the source of issues is the urine collecting and depositing and the stream being affected by that jewelry being in there. It's kind of like sticking your thumb over a garden hose. It makes it a lot harder to control. A lot of people, including myself, will sit down if given the option in a clean, well-sanitized restroom. But in public, usually we will try to find a urinal as your best option. Um, this is something that's not going to change. It doesn't get better. Um, sometimes it gets a little bit worse at times. Um, but it's it's part of having the piercing. Um Changing the thickness of the jewelry and the fact that this piercing particularly is prone to stretching itself, it will always, the jewelry will always expand, or the piercing will always expand beyond the, the width of the jewelry. It's a very easy piercing to stretch. A lot of people find the larger gauges more comfortable, and it can help kind of control this urine issue. Um, it's not uncommon uh, for people to go from 12 gauge all the way up into zero gauge or two gauge to find what fits comfortable for them and what they really like. The only problem is, is the thicker you get, the heavier the jewelry is, the more pressure it is on that thin tissue at the entrance of urethra. So you wanna be very careful with balancing the two over time. With the frenum, most men find the support of the jewelry very stimulating. Um, some people don't. Some women find it very, very stimulating. Some women don't. It's one of those things where I will always say, and this goes the same for the Prince Albert, this is your biggest sexual muscle. 
as the newness of certain situations or sin, sin, certain newness of certain sensations wears off, the effect of these piercings will wear off too because it's not a new thing. Um, it, it's all in your mind for the most part, I guess, but yes, it will add support to it and it does kind of stimulate the area. And that really depends on where the piercing is located at too. And that's something you should talk to your piercer about of what your end goal is. The other issue with living with this piercing is that when you're flaccid, those barbells can be a little bit on the loose side so they can get caught on clothing and et cetera. Just during, like during the healing process, you kind of want to try to find uh, something that supports that and doesn't get caught all the time. Also, it's important to measure the, uh, the piercing distance when you're erect and get the perfect fit for what's going to work for you. Finally, on both of these, of course, you're going to need to practice safe sex whenever switching partners, and that doesn't end after the piercing is healed or what have you. It continues pretty much until you take the piercing out and let it close. The thing with Prince Albert piercings is often they will not close. They can stay open for long periods of time, especially if you stretch them. Frenums, they're a lot more like a uh, nipple piercing where uh, I've had clients that have had them for years, take them out for a couple of hours and have problems getting them back in. So that's all I have to say on this subject today. Uh, kind of a bit, a bit long one. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully it was informative. Um, if you have any, either of these piercings and you would like to share your experience, please do so in the comments. Also, if you have any questions about either of these piercings, please leave a comment. I usually answer them when I have time. Even if you have a question that has nothing to do with either of these, I'll usually answer it if I have time. If you liked the video and found it informative, please give us a thumbs up. Let us know that you liked it. We like it when you like it and it makes us warm and fuzzy instead of prickly and cold. Nobody wants to be prickly and cold. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time we post something. Also, if you would like to see all the videos at a more organized level than what you see on YouTube, there's over 400 of them, by the way. Uh, check out our new website, uh, bptchannel.com. All of our subs listed on there. Also, we now, if you'd like to follow us, uh, we have an Instagram Facebook and Twitter, all for the channel specifically. If you like merch, you like clothing, you like uh, you like to wear things outside, you like to uh, have beach towels, you like to uh, have a, a tote bag to tote all this stuff in. Check out our merch store. Uh, roughly over a dozen different designs, very similar colors you can get it in, and lots of different products. Plus, it shows your pride in body art and your support of the channel. Other than that, till next time, here's hoping all your piercings heal with ease and without a single issue. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see if your body piercing needs in the future. Have a good day, everybody. Go out there, uh, stay safe, wear your mask, wash your hands, be healthy, and enjoy life.